storytelling time. Gather round, class. Now, class, why are you sitting in the back? Stand up, come on. The male and females colored school. 
number one. Now this wasn't the first public colored school. That was African, that was at the African Baptist Church, and that opened in January 2nd, 1865 on Saratoga Street. Now during that time, between 1865 and 1888, there were 13 primary schools only. Notice I said 13 primary schools only for colored children. That is because the city said it was neither, and I'm quoting, neither advisable or practical for there to be grammar and high schools for colored children. Now in 1867, the city council voted to operate these schools for colored children, replacing all black teachers with white teachers. So during that time, me, as well as Brother David, would not have been teaching in this building at this school. But it took a man by the name of Isaac Myers, who was a famous black Baltimorean. He was a labor leader, he was a fighter, he was a businessman, he was a hawker, and he fought for quality schools for colored children, and he also demanded that there be black teachers teaching colored children. Now you notice I'm using the word colored people. That is because during that time, on up until the mid 20th century, that's what we were called, colored or negro. Now we call ourselves black or African American. So here you have the male and female school for colored children, number one. And I want you to take around, I want you to just look around and just try to feel the vibes, the, the spirits, and there was an article in the Sun newspaper dated November 14, 1885, that talked about the harsh conditions of the school. And they said that some of the classrooms were so small that the children and the teachers almost suffocated. Yet I said learning took place here. They said it was poor ventilation and very bad lighting. Yet I said learning took place here. In case of a fire, they said the children and the teachers would not have been able to hardly move down the narrow stairway. The school took place on two floors, this first floor and the second floor. Learning took place here. There were low ceilings, damp walls, noisy factories, the blowing of steam whistles. Yet learning took place here. There was roar from the streets, no machinery, smoke and dirt from engines, so noise. You can just imagine how people were cramped and on cloudy days you couldn't hardly see, and yet learning took place here. This school at one time held almost 600 kids, so they were all squeezed in. And so the son complained about this, and so this school lasted for about nine years, and yet, at least nine black students graduated from this school and went on to become teachers teaching colored children. Now, I don't know what all happened during school hours at this school, but I have an idea because I attended an all segregated school in the Deep South from first grade to 12th grade, so I kind of have an idea. Uh, during that time, the students would come in, sit down quietly, and wait for the teacher to begin. The teacher was the key, was the leader, was the emperor, was the president. So you didn't move. You waited for the teacher to give instruction, to give order. First, there was the roll call. And then there was a devotional period where there was a prayer, thanking the Lord for the many blessings. Next, there was a scripture reading. Usually you had to recite the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I still not want. Or something from the New Testament, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Everything was about improving, learning to read, write, arithmetic. Everything was done by rote. And so during recess, children would make up play party games. And I'm gonna share one with you now called Hamble on Hamble. And I'm going to call out, and this is what you're going to do. Slap, 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 slap. 
Slap, 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 slap. Come on here. Slap, 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 slap. Slap, 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 slap. Slap, 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 slap. When I do a call, like ham bone, ham bone, where you been? Slap, 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 clap, slap. Got it? Okay, now, we're not going to start at the same time, but we're going to end at the same time. So this showed rhythm and memory and follow directions, okay? Are you ready? Teacher David? Okay, here we go. Hambo, Hambo, where you been? discovered 
uh, a talent and an affinity that I never thought I would have, and that was for research. I always thought of research as being stuck in a lab uh, all day, working on be it physics, be it chemistry, be it you know, earth sciences, physical sciences. I never saw the value in social science, which is crazy because I was a psychology major, but seeing it in research, <laughs> I think it was unique for me. And uh, I, I discovered my love for research, and after a few years of making money and, and figuring my life out, I decided to go back to school and pursue my PhD. So I am now in the final stages, and I do mean final yeah. stages. I have my 30, 36 days left. Congratulations. As of, <laughs> as of October 4th of this year, I will have my PhD in mental health from Johns Hopkins University. Yes. Um, okay, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm very grateful for my story. Uh, I'm very appreciative of storytelling. We all have stories to tell. Uh, I all encourage you to tell your stories. Um, I've been fortunate that one of the things that I'm probably known for more than actually being a researcher at Hopkins is being a storyteller, <laughs> which, is, which is totally fine, um, which just shows the value of uh, the talents and abilities that we all have. And uh, I encourage you all to use those talents and abilities uh, in whatever avenues are presented to you in your journey. So. What an evolution to be in this space, but to talk about where education has allowed me, a black child from East Baltimore, to be. He's also fine brother David on TED Talk. He did an excellent TED Talk, and he created his own program called Rediscover Me, Discover Me, Recover Me. So David's doing wonderful things. He's in the Bloomberg School of Public Health. that Friday evening at that church in Charlottesville, West, in Charlottesville, Virginia, the clergyman was singing the same song. So we will end with this song, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine,